What's going on guys and welcome back to another video and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this underground reveal effect inside of After Effects. Now for this example I'm using this footage here of this car and as you can see the camera is kind of looking down at the car and on my other example I kind of had the camera looking more straight on and to be honest it's a bit easier to do this effect when the camera is kind of looking down at the car just so you can see more of the ground. You don't want to have the camera looking I guess up to the car so basically you just want to use footage that's similar to this and you'll get a pretty good result. Also it doesn't have to be a dirt road it can be on like a normal asphalt or street like this so if you do happen to have your car on a dirt road like this then you can do that or if your car is shot on just a random road then that's totally fine as well so the first thing we're going to do is go all the way to the start of our frame and what we want to do is drag our out point right here all the way to the very start or I guess if your footage is somewhere over here, then you basically just wanna make this in and out point exactly one frame. So it's capturing that first frame of that footage. So once you have that first frame selected, you can go ahead and hit Control M and this will open up your render queue. Inside of your render queue, you wanna to go to the output mode and make this to PNG still. And then you can output this to whatever you want and then just go ahead and hit render. Now inside your folder, you'll have that screenshot of that image. Now I'm gonna be using Adobe Firefly for this and I'm pretty sure this is a free like online software you can use. So I'd recommend using this or you can go ahead and just use Photoshop's generative AI, but this is just a super easy way to do it online and it's super quick. So you just wanna to go to this URL here and I'll have it linked down in the description below. So you can go ahead and follow that link and then you'll just have this screen where you can upload that image. So locate that image and then drag it into here. Then you wanna go over to the left and select the remove tool and we can go ahead and make our brush size bigger for this. And you just wanna go ahead and start masking out your car or I guess erasing it. And you wanna to try to keep most of the background so the AI has something to reference from. So once you've erased that, you can go ahead and hit remove. So we just got done filling in these images and I don't know what it did because for some reason it spawned in a dog and some kind of bird and we definitely don't want these in our video. So, so I'm going to go ahead and hit generate more and hopefully it gets some better results. And I generally don't know what it's doing. So what I'm going to do is just hit cancel and I'm just going to have to reset this and maybe redo my mask. So if you're running to this issue, then you might just have to redo the mask and try again. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit remove again and hopefully we get some better results than last time. And there we go. That is a lot better. I don't know what was going on earlier, but these are actually usable now. So I think this third one looks best. So I'm going to go ahead and select this and then hit download. And we can just go ahead and download that to our files. And I'm just going to open this up and drag it into my project. And we can also go ahead and expand our work area all the way back to the full entire composition. Let's go ahead and drag that background in. And I'm just going to rename this to my background. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this car video by hitting Control D. And I'm going to right click that new layer and then go to time and freeze frame. And I'm just going to move this footage all the way out because we're not going to be using it right now. And we're just going to be using this background in our new car layer that we just freeze framed. So now when I toggle off this car layer, you can see it just goes away. Now let's go up to the pen tool and start creating a mask around the car. You want to start around the kind of horizon or the, the baseline of this car almost towards the bottom. So starting around the bottom of the wheels, you just want to go around the car. So once you get back towards the bottom of the car, you want to bring this mask all the way to the end of the screen or I guess off of it and then bring it down and then connect back to your starting point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hide my car layer. Now with our background layer selected and using this pen tool, we wanna go ahead and create our hole now. So let's go ahead and create a point up here and then go down kind of following along this road or I mean this ground. And you wanna to try to create a pretty perfect rectangle and let's go into this mask and if it's not already open, you just wanna hit M and it'll bring up that mask. And let's bring this to subtract. And basically you just want to make sure that it's aligned with the ground. You don't want it to be like unlevel like this because obviously that just doesn't look like it's actually a hole in the ground. So aligning it with this dirt road here and making sure it looks as realistic as possible is kind of the key. So once you've copied something like this, then you should be good to go. Now let's go up to layer, new and solid and just go ahead and hit OK on that. And we're going to go ahead and go back up to that pen tool and also hide that black solid so we can see our layer. And we want to follow this mask by going to this left corner and then this like center one and then going all the way back up to this right. And then just bring this mask down off of the screen here like this. And obviously you won't see anything change right now, but what we're going to do is turn back on our screenshot layer of that car and we can use this track mat pick whip tool and parent that to the black solid. And then you want to reverse this track mat key and as you can see, we're getting a bit of clipping in the ground here, which doesn't look great. So selecting that black solid, we're going to move this mask down so it's not covering the car on that like final frame. And then we also need to fix it for our background image. So 
Let's just go ahead and hide that car really quick. And we want to go ahead and align our black hole back up with that new mask that we just adjusted. And the easiest way to see that is just turning back on our solid layer and making sure that your background mask is selected. And you just want to drag that point so it aligns with that point that we just adjusted for a black solid. And now we can just turn that black solid back off. Now when you turn your car layer on, you should see that it looks pretty good. But we have a bit of an issue here. So to fix that, we can go back into our background layer and just adjust that mask a little bit to kind of hide those edges. Something like that looks pretty good. And you don't have to worry too much about these little edges right here. Those will just go away once we add like the underground layer. Now we can go ahead and create the animation for our car. So hitting P on your keyboard for that car layer will open up the position values. And let's hit a keyframe for just that default value of the car. And we're just going to bring that out a few frames somewhere around here. And then going to the start, we can use this Y value and just bring the car underneath our layer like this. And let's go ahead and select these keyframes and then hit F9 to easy ease them. And then go into the graph editor. And inside the graph editor, you want to make sure you have auto select graph type enabled. And using these points, you want to create a graph that looks kind of similar to mine where it gradually speed ramps up and reveals that car. Something like this I think is perfect. Let's also go ahead and enable motion blur for that layer. Now to create that underground effect, I'm going to be using this underground dirt texture that I have. You can go ahead and download this in the description below. Let's go ahead and drag on that texture all the way to the bottom of our timeline and scale it down. And let's go ahead and position it to one of these sides here. And obviously it's not going to look great right now. So to fix this, we're going to go up to our effects and presets and search up corner pin and then drag on corner pin to that layer. Now you wanna make sure the effect is selected so you can see these little circle points and you wanna drag these points so they align with the corners of our, I guess, hole cut out. And then as well as these bottom points, you just wanna drag them out so it looks like it's actually properly, I guess, aligned with the hole. I think something like that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and duplicate that underground layer. So hitting control D and we can just move this layer over a bit and then go back into that corner pin and do the same thing pretty much by moving these corners and lining it up with the um, side of the wall here. And there we go. I think that looks pretty realistic. And to blend it in even more, we can go ahead and search up an effect called Tritone. So let's bring this onto our layer. Now selecting the eyedropper tool for the highlights, you want to select like the brighter point of your footage or that background. So around here in the dirt looks pretty good. Now let's do that same thing for the midtones. So grabbing a kind of lighter shade for the midtones. And then for the shadows, you wanna go ahead and grab a pretty dark area, so maybe around here. And I'm gonna change this blend with original to 20%. And this may vary with the footage you're using. This is kind of just how it's looking for my footage. And you can also just go into the midtones here and play with it, kind of get the right color you're looking for. And you're basically just trying to match it with the background. Something like that looks pretty good. So we can copy that tritone effect and paste it onto our other layer. And that already looks a lot better. One last thing to help sell that hole is adding a new layer, new and solid. And let's rename this to shadow and bring this shadow layer down below your background. Now you should see that black solid underneath your cutout. Let's go up to the effects and presets and search up gradient. And we're going to bring on this gradient ramp onto that solid layer. Now by selecting that gradient ramp, you want to make sure that the white area is on top and then the black is on the bottom. So when you select these points, you can kind of move them around to create that effect. Something like this looks pretty good. Now let's go into our mode for that solid layer and we're gonna select stencil luma. And as you can see, it creates that effect where it looks like it's getting darker as it goes further down. And you can always just go ahead and play with the gradient ramp here to fine tune that effect. And that looks pretty good to me. Now from here, what we need to do is bring back our video. So aligning our end video frame with those keyframes where the animation reveals the car fully and you can kind of see everything come back together. You just wanna align that with our last position value. And as you can see, when you play that back, you now get that ground reveal effect. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply just a few more effects to help make everything come together. Let's go ahead and select all those layers and hit pre-compose. And then you just wanna make sure that these are selected here. So now all of those effects that we just created are in one layer. Let's go up to the layer, new, and create a new adjustment layer. And I wanna move this adjustment layer so it starts right where we see that car fully revealed. Now we can go ahead and apply shake. And like I say in all my other videos, you can go ahead and use whatever shake you wanna use, but Obviously, I'm going to be using my shake presets just because, I mean, I might be a little biased here, but I think they're just the best and easiest ones to use. So if you want to go ahead and use them, they'll be linked down in the description below and you get all these different presets here and you use them is pretty simple. You just create an adjustment layer, enable motion blur and drag on any shake you want to use. Let's go ahead and apply the shake wine rotate. And now let's play that back with the shake applied. 
And as you can see, that literally makes the effect look 100 times better. It just helps add impact and help sell that effect even more. Now, a few more effects you can do to help sell this effect even more is adding a bit of a zoom and a handheld shake to this. So hitting Control Y is a shortcut to create that adjustment layer. And I'm going to trim this down to the start of that shake by hitting Control X. Now in our effects and presets, let's search up Transform and bring on Transform onto that adjustment layer. I'm going to set the scale to 115, set a keyframe on that then go to the very end and bring this back up to 100. So now you get a subtle scale out effect, which kind of helps it look like it's less of a still image. We're also going to go ahead and hold down Alt on our keyboard while selecting this position keyframe, and then it should open up the expression values here. We're going to delete that expression and search up wiggle. And by typing in wiggle, it will just bring up this. And you just want to hit enter. Inside of these parentheses here, I'm going to do 3 comma 20. Now when you play that back, you can see it adds a bit of a handheld shake to your video. You can also go ahead and enable motion blur for that layer as well. These don't have to be exactly what I'm using. Like when I change the value from three to seven, you can see when I play this back is a lot more intense. Just by adjusting those different values, you can get a pretty crazy result. As well as changing that 20 to 50, it just makes the handheld effect look even more shaky. So yeah, go ahead and play around with that and just go ahead and create an effect that looks pretty good for your footage. And yeah, there we go. That is how you create this underground reveal effect inside of After Effects. Hopefully you guys were able to follow along with this video. I was trying to explain it as best as possible, but it was a pretty complicated effect. If you guys did enjoy this video, then make sure to drop a comment down below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, then make sure to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.